Good evening and welcome. It is an honor to welcome Prime Minister Theresa May to Stockholm here today. Uh, it is the Prime Minister's first bilateral uh, visit to Sweden, but I had the pleasure of welcoming you to Gothenburg last year uh, for the Social Summit on Fair Jobs and Growth. Our two countries uh, have enjoyed excellent relations uh, for, for centuries, and we cooperate within the European Union today, but also bilaterally uh, in areas such as uh, security and defense, research, innovation, as well as education. We value our strong relationship and partnership, and we hope to develop it further, and it, it is in this spirit that we have met here today. First, let me again state that Sweden has been and will continue to be clear in our support for and solidarity with the UK uh, following the Salisbury attack. Uh, we do that as an EU partner, but also as a close friend. Sweden is one of the member states that has expelled a Russian diplomat in response to the attack. The attempted murders in Salisbury represent a further challenge by Russia to the international rule-based order. We still expect Russia to answer to the questions posed by the United Kingdom and to collaborate, collaborate fully with the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapon, OPCW. Prime Minister May and I have discussed the, the ongoing investigation and possible additional measures. Let me mention that we also touched upon uh, other security-related uh, issues today. Challenges such as cyber security and crisis management can only be met by cooperating together, and we have agreed to continue to build further upon the, the widespread cooperation that already exists between our two nations in, in these fields. Another focus uh, of our discussions has naturally, naturally been on the state of play in the Brexit negotiations. It is positive that the negotiations between the EU and the UK so far have developed quite well. Uh, significant progress has been made in recent months to reach agreement on a transition period. And this is most welcome uh, because uh, it is another step towards uh, an orderly Brexit. In the coming months, uh, we expect the discussions on the framework for the future relationship between EU and UK to pick up pace. We should uh, approach these talks with uh, a positive and practical mindset. Clearly, and from our point of view, uh, regrettably, the UK has decided to leave the European Union and things cannot continue as before. Nevertheless, we continue as friends as and partners, and uh, many joint challenges do remain. So we therefore need a broad, deep, and constructive uh, future relationship. So finally, thank you again, Prime Minister May, for the constructive talks and uh, valuable exchange of views that we've had today. I look forward to continuing our close cooperation and partnership in many areas. Please. Well Thank, thank you very much, Prime Minister, for hosting me at Rosenbad today, and I'm very pleased to be back in Sweden. And the historic ties, the shared values and cooperation between our countries, I think, makes ours a truly special partnership. Uh, as you say, today we've talked about the attack in Salisbury, the threat Russia poses to our shared security, wider European and international security issues, as well as our bilateral relationship and the progress we've been making towards a Brexit deal. Um, but I'd like to begin by reiterating Britain's condemnation of the truly barbaric chemical attack in Douma, Syria. Saturday's horrific attack against the people of Douma, among them a number of innocent children, was utterly reprehensible. We're working closely with our allies to establish urgently the detail of what happened. If confirmed, this represents further evidence of the Assad regime's appalling cruelty against its own people, and total disregard for its legal obligations not to use these weapons. This heinous attack follows a wider pattern of reckless behavior in which fundamental international norms on counterproliferation and the use of chemical weapons have been willfully violated. And Russia's vetoes at the UN have enabled the Assad regime to breach global rules and removed mechanisms that allow us to investigate chemical weapons attacks in Syria. So the international community must strengthen its resolve to deal with those responsible 
And together with Sweden, we've called an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council, which will take place shortly. And just as we must stand up against the use of chemical weapons in Syria and violations of the counterproliferation agenda, so we must stand together in the wake of last month's nerve agent attack in Salisbury. And I'd like to thank you, Prime Minister, for your solidarity and for standing up for our shared values and our shared security. Our case for Russian culpability is clear. No other country has a combination of the capability, the intent and the motive to carry out such an act. Faced with the evidence, Russia provided no explanation and even pointed the finger at Sweden uh, in a preposterous effort to distract from the truth. And so these attempted murders represent another assault on our shared values and the international rules-based system which upholds them. But your swift condemnation of Russia was critical in helping reinforce Western unity. And the robust steps that you and others have taken in the past month demonstrate a clear recognition of the shared threat we face. We've also discussed the bilateral security and defence relationship between our countries, which remains strong. And our cooperation in this area continues to deepen as we look to bolster our European security and harden our defences in the face of the growing challenge from Russia, as well as wider threats to global security. Sweden has, Sweden has contributed to international operations in Afghanistan and Libya, and your troops now play an active role alongside ours in UN peacekeeping operations and as part of the global coalition to defeat Daesh. And I welcome Sweden's decision to join the Joint Expeditionary Force, which has bolstered our ability to respond quickly together to emerging threats across the globe. We also cooperate closely to fight terrorism. In recent years, our nations have suffered callous attacks on our citizens by cowards who want to destroy our values and our way of life. And indeed, Saturday marked one year on from a despicable act of terror here on the streets of Stockholm. As I said at the time, we will continue to stand together as we confront this shared threat. Beyond security, our strong trade and investment relationship, which has grown between our countries over hundreds of years, continues to flourish. There are a thousand Swedish companies in the UK and a similar number of British companies with a presence here in Sweden. And our economic ties are one of the many reasons we're determined to maintain our close links with Sweden after Brexit. And today we've discussed the ambitious economic and security partnership we want to build. We've also reflected on progress in the negotiations and considered those elements that remain outstanding, including on issues relating to Northern Ireland. Our shared interests will undoubtedly continue to align post-Brexit, and I have no intention of allowing our close and historic ties to weaken. I want a future relationship of unprecedented breadth and depth with the EU and with our European partners too. And so I'm absolutely committed to continuing to work with you in the years ahead to build on our partnership and keep our people prosperous and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you. John Vale from the Press Association. Um, you may have seen that this evening Donald Trump has said he will respond to the chemical attack in Syria within 48 hours. Um, if there were an international coalition led by the US um, in favour of renewed military action in Syria, would the UK and Sweden um, follow suit and join that coalition? Well, we, th what we are currently doing is working urgently with our allies to assess uh, what has happened here. As I said, if it, it, this is, has been an absolutely barbaric uh, attack that has taken place. And if it is clear that it is the responsibility of the Assad regime, it's yet another example of the callous and brutal way in which he's been treating his people. Um, and we're clear that those responsible should be held to account. We're, as I say, working urgently with our allies to assess what has happened, but we're also uh, working with our allies on any action that is necessary. Yeah, it's in line with what the Prime Minister said. Uh, this is horrendous. Uh, once again, we see uh, chemical weapons being used uh, that are prohibited. Uh, we need to find uh, the responsible actor, of course, and also claim responsibility. And that is why, uh, for example, UK and Sweden now has, has initiated this discussion in the Security Council, because we need to find, find those who are responsible and claim the responsibility and make sure that it doesn't happen again. 
Uh, yes, I have a follow-up regarding Syria. You've taken a rather confrontative stance towards Russia after Salisbury attack. And given the situation in Syria and the need for a political solution possibly involving Russia, is, is that a, a wise thing to escalate the conflict? Well, first of all, as uh, I repeated in the, uh, in the remarks that I've just made, if you look at what happened on the streets of Salisbury, this was a terrible incident. The use of a military-grade grade nerve agent on the streets of a city in the United Kingdom, uh, an attempt uh, on the lives of two people, and of course others were affected too. Uh, we're very clear that this is part of, uh, that, as I said, that the, it is Russia that has the capability, the intent, and the motive to have conducted this attack. Um, we concluded, and indeed the European Union Council at its March meeting concluded there was no plausible alternative explanation other than that uh, responsibility lay with Russia. And I think it's important, but what's important is this is uh, something terrible that has taken place in the UK, but it is part of a broader series of pattern of activity that we see from Russia in terms of their attempts to interfere in elections, their propaganda, their cyber attacks, uh, and of course the backing that they've given to the Assad regime in Syria. And I think it's absolutely right that we call out action when we feel it's necessary to do so. Um, good evening, Prime Minister. Claire Ellicott from the Daily Mail. Um, is the drop in the number of part-time students at the Open University since 2011 a concern for the government? And will this be part of the higher education review? And also, if I may, um, following the Syria attacks, would you consider recalling Parliament to debate the possibility of military action? Well, as I said in response to an earlier question on, the, uh, uh, on Syria, we're obviously working urgently with our allies to assess what, is, uh, what has happened, um, and we are also working with our allies on uh, what action might be necessary. In relation to the separate issue of, of students and part-time students in the UK, of course, uh, as you will know, it's not that many weeks ago that I initiated a review of tertiary education in the UK. Because I think it's important that we ensure that there isn't just a, a single approach to tertiary education, a single route through uh, for tertiary education for individuals, that people are able to access it in a variety of ways. And also, of course, that we look at technical education and the value we give to technical education alongside that. So we'll be looking at the, re the review, we'll be looking at the range of options in relation to tertiary review and making sure that people are able to access it in a variety of ways, in ways that suit them, not just in an assumption that there is only one route through on tertiary education. Uh, yes, I'm Lars Larsson from the Swedish News Agency. Did, did I hear you say that you're discussing further measures towards Russia? And the second question, if I may, uh, what do you think of the outcome of the Hungarian election? And have you both congratulated Viktor Orban to his victory? On further measures, there is an ongoing investigation. So far, the European uh, Council, we decided to withdraw the, the European uh, Union ambassador from Moscow, as well as uh, a number of countries also withdrew uh, diplomats from uh, Moscow to show our support to the United Kingdom. And there's a, now an ongoing investigation, and still the Rus uh, Russia has not uh, answered the, the posed questions by the United Kingdom. So we, we need to keep that option open. It, didn't mean, it doesn't mean that we now discuss uh, concrete measures, but we have to have that uh, possibility, of course, because Russia still needs to answer uh, some questions here. I mean, why, why this uh, uh, nerve agent uh, uh, produced in, in Soviet Union, uh, taken over by Russia, and now being used in, in a murder attempt in Salisbury in Britain, how does it, how does it happen? So they need to answer those questions. Uh, regarding the Hungarian election, we, we never uh, first uh, congratulate those who are re-elected uh, to begin with. And now it's, now it's up to the, to the Hungarian government. We haven't seen the, I don't think we haven't seen the really final result, but it, it, it's obvious that the, the government uh, in office right now will, will continue. Uh, and it's up to them to show that they respect the European laws, the European, the, the rules that we have. And uh, so, well, it's, it's up to them to show what they want. 
Uh, the, the UK has a history of many years of cooperation with uh, the Hungarians, and we will look forward to continuing to work with the, uh, with the Hungarian government in the future. In relation to the other issue, um, as uh, the Prime Minister has said, uh, I think it is absolutely right that we look and discuss whether further action is necessary, whether further measures should be taken. I said that from the UK's point of view uh, in the statements I made in the House of Commons of immediate uh, relatively soon after the Salisbury uh, attack, that uh, we would be, if necessary, looking at further measures, and we will continue to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.